So, I'm not going to tell you a story about sex, because that means someone Darn. would fire me. <laughs> I am going to tell you a story, though, about, is it, it's about the deep sea, about animals in the deep sea. You know, it's a dark and stormy ocean. So take yourself down in the deep ocean, right, uh, in a world where there's never sunlight. And so that's the deep sea, which is 80% of our planet's living space. So everything else that you think of, every rainforest, the tundra, polar regions, Boston, New York, <laughs> all of that is in the other 20%, right? And 80% of our planet is this deep, dark ocean where there's no sunlight ever. And so just for context here, I would argue that if like aliens came and checked out Earth and they reported back to their uh, alien queen mother <laughs> on what Earth was like, what's the average condition on Earth, like where things live, they'd say it's cold and it's wet and it's always dark, right? That is the dominant habitat, right, in our biosphere. And so the deep ocean, all these cool things, these organisms do all these cool things that we don't think of uh, because that's not so relevant to us. In the midwater, which is a vast, expansive, you know, body of darkness, right, um, organisms make their own light, bioluminescence, right? And so in the deep ocean, the wavelengths that travel farthest are kind of blue-green. So they all make blue-green light, and it's the way they talk to each other and find mates, because it is a big ocean. And as a bit of a side story, like take anglerfish, which we all know and love, and Finding Nemo and everything else. If you look at how far apart they are in the deep sea, it's kind of like taking two anglerfish and putting them in, say, Gillette Stadium, for you Pats fans, um, putting them in there at random and asking a, a, a female and a male to find each other. That's how far apart they are. And so light is a great way of signaling. Like chemicals are great and they probably play a role too, or sure that they do in fact, but light's a great way of signaling. So this blue-green light is, is, that's the language of the deep sea. So, let me tell you about this fish called Malacostius niger. So it's called the stoplight loose jaw fish. And it's a black fish about this long, jet black. In fact, interestingly, it has one of the uh, darkest, sort of closest to true black bodies along with one of its cousins. Uh, because being uh, having a skin that's really um, good at absorbing light makes it harder to be seen, right? Even so, in the deep sea. because even even in the absence of light, there's still bioluminescence, right? And so fish use it for hunting. So Malacostius niger is really cool for a bunch of reasons. One is it has this jaw that it can unhinge and form a big gaping mouth, which you could imagine is useful in a low food environment. Weirdly. Its jaw lacks this buccal membrane. So when they, they don't have this flap of skin between their lower jaw. So when they distend it, there's a big gaping hole in it. And so they look like kind of Jack Skellington, like this sort of skeleton jaw, right? Um, and we still don't understand that, other than the fact that it means that they can snap their jaw cl closed really fast because there's not a lot of water resistance. But the coolest thing about the stoplight loose jaw fish is that it too produces blue bioluminescence, right? Just like everybody else, and it uses that for communicating and maybe counter illumination, you know, a little bit of uh, camouflage. But under its eyes, it has two really bright red um, photophores that produce light. And this confused people for a long time because very few other fish see red light, except Malacostius does. And it shines this red light like night vision in the deep sea so it can illuminate its prey without its prey seeing it. So it's like a fish with night vision and its eyes can see red. And for a long time, people were like, well, how can its eyes see red? And there was this big debate. Well, just a couple of years ago, they published this paper saying that the gene that gives it this ability to see red looks like it was somehow stolen from a photosynthetic bacteria in the surface ocean. That, wait, wait, in the surface ocean? Gene transfer. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like a rhodopsin of, of sorts. Yeah, that some, some, it's like an, uh, an accessory pigment in the photosynthetic Maybe apparatus. Maybe it came down from marine snow? Where? You tell me. I don't know. What's oh. marine snow? All of, all oh, marine snow? snow? That is like all of, the yeah. all of the poop yeah. and all the things that just yeah. snow down. It's, it's like a Christmas of shit. Exactly. And so it's all, <laughs> those, all the all scales right. and, right. and and all, all the, the like stuff. leftover all juicy right. bits. Yeah. The juicy bits. Yeah, the yeah. juicy bits. Yeah. Yeah. And, and DNA. DNA. Yeah. 
But this is crazy, right? Because so, as I, you know, you all know this, right? So bacteria, will, they're floozies, right? They'll pass genes oh. all over the place and that's all well and good. But it's a little different with animals. And the question of how this deep sea fish came to have this is, is really hotly debated. So uh, when this was published, a bunch of people said, absolutely not possible. And there were all sorts of kind of counter arguments, but the fact is we really don't know. It just sort of, it just, the gene itself and the protein smacks of what we see in, in these photosynthetic bacteria. So See? I thought, I thought this no was sex. Story about sex. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I was waiting for the sex to show. You had one job. <laughs> I said no sex. You had one I job. <laughs> no. no. You have to have a whole different red nope. light district. <laughs> 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 well, not yeah. planned. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh,